Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings 2021 Wyndham Championship Picks. First look and research. You want to play in the best tournament on DraftKings? Easy. Hit the description. Check out the Pat Mayo Experience Listeners League. 3,000 spots. Let's fill it up quickly this time so we're not waiting around until Wednesday evening to do this. Please and thank you. Let's get that filled so they do not make it smaller throughout the FedEx Cup playoffs because this is the final event before the playoffs start. And there's a lot of uh, seeding implications ready to go for this week for some pretty notable names that are going to be teeing off in the field to get themselves into the race for the $60 million prize pool with $15 million going to the winner of the FedEx Cup. Smash the like button for the video. You tell me which of the fringe bubble players in the FedEx Cup playoff race right now are going to miss the playoffs. Is it going to be Ricky Fowler who needs a decent week to get him in? Is it going to be Adam Scott? Is it going to be Charles Howell? Is it going to be Francesco Molinari? That is probably the most likely answer to this question. But I want to see what you guys have to say. Sub to Mayo Media Network. And if you're feeling generous and you want some bucks in your pocket, Fantasy Football Picks and Bets is about to go to three times a week on Mayo Media Network, just twice a week for the moment, giving out winners on prize picks last week as well for the preseason. Preseason NFL, a uh, pretty beatable market, I'm not going to lie to you, and most sports books are not offering player prop odds right now. So prize picks is, and it's like I said, a pretty beatable market. Use code MMN at prize picks and you'll get yourself up to a $100 deposit bonus. If that's something that you want to partake in, I recommend that you do. And we'll be breaking down the preseason games again on fantasy football picks and bets. However, if you leave a five-star review on the Apple podcast version of that show, you can find that in the description right now, subscribe to it, leave the five-star review, something you enjoy, Twitter handle and email address. You know the deal by now you're in a draw to win in some cash, one of a bunch of $100 cash giveaways. The prize pool has jumped from $500 to $1,000. A few more reviews, and we're going to be up to $1,500 in cash giveaways. I'll be announcing those next week. The schedule for golf this week and going forward is going to be a little bit altered now. So this week, obviously, the research show is back. I didn't do it last week, and I really had no idea how much people seem to enjoy the show. Uh, I got... I very rarely get rid of shows, and with football coming, like, the show is not going to be, the research show is not going to be happening during football season. I just legit do not have the time. And it's funny where I'm at now. When I decided to go all in on golf about four or five years ago, the most common thing that I got was, stick to fucking football, you moron. I don't want to hear about golf. That was the majority of my replies. And now that I'm transitioning back into football full-time for the year, which I've done every single year, obviously, it's just during the football offseason, it's hardcore golf time on the Pat Mayo experience and what I spend my time writing about, podcasting about, doing videos about, trying to sell people on. But oh, fantasynational.com slash mayo for 20% off Fantasy National. I mean, there's four events in the next four weeks. You get that monthly, you're good to go. Get that 20% discount in you if you want to win some bucks on golf. But now people are like, stick to golf. I don't even know that you do football. It's like, man, this is my... I will now be entering my 13th year of covering fantasy football full time. It makes me feel like an old man. But then I check my birth date and I am getting old. So that actually correlates pretty well. But uh, it's just one of those things. Like, football pays for everything else. The fact that I was able to go all-time, like, full-time into golf in the first place was because of the success of football uh, in my career that I felt like I could branch out. I gave up baseball. I gave up basketball. I gave up everything else besides football so I could concentrate on golf. So there's still going to be golf shows during football season, obviously. That's one of the reasons that I added Fantasy Golf Degenerates to Mayo Media Network as well. Is like They're going to be doing their DraftKings and betting show every single week. I'll be doing that. Sky and Tom are still going to be doing the Euro Picks show, but it won't be three, four times a week for golf. It'll be once a week for golf for me, uh, and then the rest of the shows will be football or any sort of special event. Like when the Ryder Cup comes up, we're going to be doing Ryder Cup stuff. So uh, we can expect full-time coverage all the way through the Tour Championship. I just want to give people a heads up. Like this show is not going to be as intensive or as long as it's been throughout the summer. It's not going to be 50-minute episodes, although I've already been rambling for like four and a half minutes already. So this one might actually be a little bit longer. I tried to, I want to try to keep this one to like 10 to 15 minutes, but it's me. That never happens. I have always skew 
longer anyway. Also, uh, hit up Feinberg, at Feinberg 17 on Twitter. I'll be doing my show, obviously, with him tomorrow. So the schedule this week, I got thrown off. Obviously, you're watching or listening to this right now. It's Sunday, or maybe you're listening to it Monday morning. Uh, Bet show with Jeff will still be on Mondays. I think I'm going to move the DraftKings show from Tuesday to Wednesday and do football on Tuesdays. That's at least going to be the way that it is this week on the Pat Mayo experience. Then there's a cuss corner on Thursday and then probably another football show on Friday. Uh, Just trying to get all that out, maximize the amount. This is like the big net season for fantasy football. There's so many new people. They're just starting to get into fantasy football. And we're really trying to get them to subscribe to the channel because we can convert those football people into golf people. I know a lot of you. That's how you got into golf. I mean, people tell me all the time, like, hey, Pat, I was with you during baseball and football back in the day in 2013 when the show started. You you gave up football or you gave up baseball, but I really got into golf because of football. I wanted something to do in the offseason. So we're hoping to convert more people over to golf, which just means more people in the player pool. And hopefully we can get them up to speed pretty easily. If you love Fantasy National, which I'm going to be doing my walkthrough with today in terms of the stats. Once again, fantasynational.com slash mayo for that discount. You're going to love runthesims.com, which is essentially a, well, it's not essentially, it's a new site that I've created with my partner, Justin Freeman. And the basis was using Fantasy National as a template where instead of golf only, it's football only. And there's different levels of membership. There's a free membership, which will still get you access to projections and the advanced stats hub if you want to just dig in and do your own research. But we also have an optimizer for daily fantasy. Pretty sweet betting tools. The way that the betting tools work, it's going to be props only probably at the beginning, but like I was just testing it around this morning. It's still in beta. Full launch will be August 15th. But the biggest thing is I just typed it in for week one. I was just fucking around with Aaron Jones because he was first alphabetically. And you can type in like all of his player props. You want to know Aaron Jones, the over under for his rushing yards is let's say 81 and a half for week one. And then you can set the VIG on either side. So like minus 115 to the over, minus 105 to the under. And then you just press simulate. So we have these custom game simulations. You can use the baseline projections for each individual game, or you can customize them with where you think you know better than the computer in the baseline. You have a full reign to adjust those, just like on Fantasy National. You can input what you want to see in order for it to tell you things. And it'll spit you out whether the bet on the over, the under at those current odds is actually a good bet or a bad bet. And it will give you an actual chart of running a simulation a thousand or ten thousand times where all of the out comes are on that graph. So I think that's really cool. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So if you do want to get in on the simulation, the optimizer, the betting tools, all that stuff, that does cost money. It's behind a paywall. It's fan it's uh, sorry, fantasy national. It is run the sims.com slash mayo and you'll get a discount off of that as well. I highly recommend it. I wouldn't be starting something or putting my name behind something that I wouldn't use and wouldn't want to go into. But it's the same thesis behind this. Like I'm not big. I mean I there are a couple great content content sites out there, like FTN, which you know I'm still involved with, but this is just a tools product. No one is selling you picks on this site. They are just tools that you probably don't have access to or don't have the time to create on your own, and they've been made fully customizable to you. So if you think that you have an edge on this, and there's baselines that are punched in there, obviously, if you just want to use those, but you can adjust any way you want with how you see fit. And really, the single game simulation is going to print money for second half and fourth quarter showdown on DraftKings this year. Trust me on that. Justin's been selling me on that for like the past, and Justin's one of the best showdown DraftKings DraftKings players of the past three years. It's like Drewby, a few others, and Justin Freeman. That's it. And they make, and Jordan too, as well, Jordan Cooper. They make all the money doing this. So Justin bringing his tools, the ones that he's been using, to public access. Well, public access, you gotta pay for it. But the fact that you can customize it too is just sort of the cherry on top. So run the sims.com slash mayo. Please go check this out. Great. We're not going to do a long show. We're nine minutes in. I haven't got to anything. Wyndham Championship in the field this week. It is not the strong field, but it's, you know, borderline okay, I suppose. Patrick Reed's pro- Patrick Reed and Webb Simpson are probably the two best players in the field. But you also have Brian Harmon. Louie is playing again. Louie is really doubling down to try to win this money in the FedEx Cup. He passed on the Olympics in order to concentrate 
concentrate on winning that 15 million because we know with Louis, you know, it comes through. And we, do, I don't know what the results of the WGC St. Jude Invitational are right now. The fourth round has just begun as I am recording this. Prayers up to Harris English. Go get that win, sir. Billy Horschel finish inside the top 10. And I, by my calculations, if those two things happen, I think I'm up for the year all of a sudden. Gets me right out of the hole because that'd be a big winning week for me if that ended up happening. So, yeah, even if just Billy Horschel comes inside the top 10, I'm probably not back up to even. I'm still on the hole, but it'd be pretty nice. But Louis is just playing, playing, playing. And, like, why play the Wyndham if you're already inside the top 10 inside the FedEx Cup? But these points carry over all the way to the Tour Championships. And the more you can bank, the better off you're going to be. And that seems to be the way that he's playing it right now. So he's going to play, like, five consecutive weeks. Reed is playing as well, and he's now gone from... British Open to Minneapolis to Tokyo to Memphis to the Wyndham, and he's going to be playing the next three weeks where he is the defending champion at Liberty National as well next week for the Northern Trust. So it's going to be quite a run for Patrick Reed here. I mean, it's golf. How fatigued are you really going to get? I'm, But it's a lot of travel and a lot of golf to be played over an eight-week stretch. So watch out for Patrick Reed. He has won this event in the past, by the way. Kokrak, Sungjae, Hideki is in the field as well. My guy, see, woo, Kim. You know, you know he's going to be playing. This is something from him a little bit later on as well. Patton Kazire, Will Zalatoris. Then you have guys like, well, on the bubble who I was talking about, Kevin Nas playing too, Matthew Wolf, Bubba Watson. Uh, they're all firmly entrenched in the FedEx Cup right now. But Gary Woodland, Matt Kuchar, Adam Scott, Ricky Fowler, and Charles Howell III, Francesco Molinari, Michael Thompson, Ryan Moore, uh, Slovakian hero Rory Sabatini. They're all on the FedEx Cup bubble right now. Uh, going into the week, obviously, this is going to update after the week ends, When you know, especially with guys like Adam Scott, who are in that WGC, basically get free FedEx Cup points. But still, he's going to be close to the bubble because his performance has not been great in Memphis so far this week that they're going to need to at least make the cut if they're inside to likely keep their spot in but for a couple of them they're going to need to finish top 20 top 10 in order to clinch a spot in the playoffs justin rose and tommy fleetwood are both on the outside looking in right now i doubt that they will just randomly join the window mito Pereira is the first alternate by this by by the way i don't know if he's in or not right now but someone will withdraw and they'll get it. unless rose and fleetwood want to take that spot in the field and try to earn their way into the fedex cup we know justin rose loves money you think he would do that unless he finishes a hot Sunday in Memphis and gets himself inside that 125 bubble. So there's a lot of really good storylines for the Wyndham. So I think it's going to be a pretty interesting event. We should talk about the course though. Uh, Sedgefield CC, you're pretty accustomed to Sedgefield at this point. 7,131 yards, par 70. Bermuda, the biggest correlation you're probably going to see is East Lake, although that's a 30-man field that most people do not play in year to year. But other than that, there's been a lot of crossover between the Heritage Leaderboard, the Sony Open Leaderboard, and the TPC Sawgrass for the Players' Championship leaderboard, which makes sense. They're all kind of in the south. Well, I mean, not Sony Open, but there are southern Bermuda courses that are par 70 short courses. So that makes a lot of sense. Jim Herman won last year at minus 21. Post in the year before that at minus 22. Snedeker, Stenson, C. Woo! Kim and Davis Love the third are your past winners of this event. Uh, the past five have breached into the minus 20s, minus 21, minus 22, minus 21, minus 22, minus 21. So we're on pace for a minus 22 finish this year from the winner. It is an irons, I mean, essentially a wedge and putting competition, uh, much like we've seen from the other courses in this back end of the PGA Tour rotation so far. Uh, if we just kind of bring up what the past course conditions have been and the course breakdown, we'll also take a quick gander at tournament history you know, it's an easy course <laughs> by and large like Snedeker shot a 59 in the first round here like that 60 61 are definitely available if you have a hot putter that day you know they're easy to hit fairways by and large it got a bit windy in the final round last year I remember Herman kept keeping the ball low to the ground he has had an awesome weekend and was able to go through it they're faster than average greens less than 7200 yards Donald Ross design that's really where the East Lake comes in although it really seems to have no correlation whatsoever with Detroit GC which is another Donald Ross course there are eight par fours between 400 and 450 yards just as a quick breakdown the best players on 
holes from that range over the past 24 rounds are Hank Libiota, Kramer Hickok, Zach Johnson, Real Deal Streelman, and Ryan Almale. And if you did take a compilation of Sawgrass, Sedgefield, and Harbortown, mix them into one and looked at the average per uh, average stroke gain total per round over the past 24 rounds. Webb Simpson, Chris Baker, the birdie maker, JT Poston, Brian Herman, and Adam Scott are your top five. If you shorten it to the past 12 rounds, Sung J and C woo, actually jump inside the top three along with Webb Simpson. If you were curious, it's one of the few courses on tour where par fours actually have a distinct advantage of the top 10 finishers over par fives and par threes. There's only two par fives, both pretty eagleable by the entire field, a 6% eagle rate on hole number five and a 4.2% eagle rate on hole number 15. I think that is worth noting. It's one of these courses where it's not short hitters and accuracy. It's not bombers. It's kind of anyone can compete at this course and actually have themselves quite a time. You can see by the average shot distribution. The plurality are going to fall in that 150 to 175 range, but you see a lot inside of that as well. And I mean, what's a 155 yard shot to a PGA Tour player? I mean, that's a big, you know, what gap wedge for some of them, like pitching wedge at worst from 175. So it's like I said, the wedge fest. And as you can see, putting is going to make a big difference even as you climb up. Uh, that's going to be the separator this week. You, you don't get to minus 22 by putting poorly. It's, it's not one of these tournaments where, you know, at minus 11 in a tournament where it's playing somewhat difficult, great ball striking can mask a lot of terrible putting. That can most definitely happen. Right? Like Sedgefield is a good example, of, or not Sedgefield, sorry, uh, Southwind is a good example of that, where you've seen guys in the past actually go out and post negative putting results and still win that event or top five in that event. It's just really difficult when you have to make so many birdies because you're not going to hit it to five feet every single time. Green and regulation percentage way up at this course, almost 72% versus 65%. Uh, you can see the average distribution, the highest two scores are 67 and 68 with 69 and 66 along the way. Don't see a lot of like a 78s out there. And like just the distribution down towards the bottom end is pretty well, pretty low too. Guys lie back off the tee here. It's not one where you have to go bomb and gouge in the proximity to the hole is also very small. The average green size is around 6,500 square feet. So it's about tour average when it comes down to that tournament history, the best player of the past five years, Webb, Armour, Snedeker, see, woo! Kim and Kevin Kisna. Then you got Kokrak and Reed up there. Kokrak's played this tournament really well. Made the past four cuts with three finishes inside the top 20. You know, Reed has a win here. And then he has, you know, no finish worse than T22 in the three events that he's played. We take back at last year's leaderboard. We shall discover that, you know, Herman won. You got Webb and C. Wu, Kisner and Redmond all inside the top three. Varner, Zach Johnson. Varner's actually a pretty good look here. We'll dig into Harold Ivana the third right now. Just to kind of take a detour a little bit. Local guy. This is sort of a home event for him. He's made the cut each of the past four years. Two top tens over that time. It's always going to be the putty with him with Big Harry V. Let's see how he's done at the Heritage. He was second at the Heritage this year. I had anyway, that's uh, the Heritage. So it's been a, kind of a mixed bag for him there. Putted really well on those Bermuda, Bermuda greens at Harbor Town in South Carolina earlier this year. But that second place finish is, I wouldn't say it's like overly notable, but it's nice to see that he's doing well. There is a top 15 finish at the Sony as well. And oh, Sawgrass, I want the Players Championship. Top 10 at the Players. Uh, he was actually like very much in contention that year. So you can see it's all about spike putting weeks for Big Harry V. He has hasn't been playing well coming in, but you can just see from his tournament history, does have a pretty decent run. Sung Jay back to back top tens at this course, despite very poor results so far this year. Ryan Armour is another one who's made four straight cuts, no finish worse than T25. Showed up at the Rocket Mortgage a few times as well, the other Ross design, although I don't know how much of a correlation that is going to be. Who else? We got the Panama. Panama was T2, then he won the Heritage. So again, I, I do think that is something worth looking at in, in the long term, just as a refresher of who was good at the Heritage this year. Obviously, Stuart Sink. What is Stuart Sink in the field this time? Gotta think he's in the field. No, he's not playing, because he would have been a very popular pick, because he's still playing really good golf at this point. So you got Sink, Grillo, 
Werner, poor Morikawa, man. The one, the one time, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to complain about Morikawa because he's made me a lot of money over the past few years. Not having him at the Open Championship and him beating Spieth, who I did have the money on, this really firmly stuck out in my mind going into that final round. I was like, man, he's been such a closer in these final rounds. Except for when I bet him at the Heritage and he was trash in the final round. That wasn't great. So this is an opportunity for Kirk. Um, even Sungjae, who I said, you know, again, wasn't playing all that well, was T13 at the course. Howell could jump up once again. Denny McCarthy is one to watch. Kucher is another one who's on that bubble who needs to get in, not having a very good season whatsoever. This does strike me as a course that should play to his strengths, however. So you can just go back and look at the heritage over time and see what you want to do with that. But I do think that if we just dig into the stats and modeling, we can figure something out and... Uh, I'm going to adjust this to pass 24 rounds right now before I forget. Go to the custom stat model. How have we been doing with the Wyndham? Wyndham average, in my assessment, over the past few years. What did I have in there? So approach, proximity 150. I'm going to get proximity down from 175 to 200. Just really hammer down on 150 to 175. I'm going to add in eagle rate because I think that... Eagle rate is tough because eagle rate is always going to skew larger towards the players who hit the ball longer because uh, it's going to take information from every course. I suppose if we shrunk this down to like 7,200 yards and below, it might give us a more accurate result because longer hitters on longer par fives are just going to have a better chance for eagles um, by and large rather than shorter hitters who play them as three shot holes on some courses. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. So for one, uh, 400 to 450, 15%, tee to green, 10%, 150 to 175, proximity, 5%, approach, 35%, par fives gained, 5%. I have bogey avoidance in just because I like to look at it, but I am not weighting it in this. Opportunities gain, 10%, strokes gain, putting, 10%, and eagles gain, 5%. Let's sort and see what happens for us as we go through this. I'm going to guess Libiota and Vegas are near the top of this list, along with Louis. That's my guess coming into it. I haven't run this yet, so I don't know. I'm just trying to think of guys in my mind who are playing really well right now and who would hit these numbers. Uh, Seamus Power, Kokrak, Louis, Libiota, Shez, Reevy. Okay. I think Reevy's having a decent run at the Barracuda this week. But that's... Okay. I, I think that's interesting. I mean, I'm I'm not one to just piss my money in my way on Shez Reevy every week. It's like every third week that I do it. So I'll probably be in this time around. How is Streelman playing? Streelman hasn't played since the Open. That was pretty good there. It's been a decent run for Streelman. He's the type of, like, older player. He's not a young gun like Tim thinks. Oh, there's Armour. Even in recent form, he's still doing well. There's Vegas. There's Sammy Burns, uh, who is having a decent week in Memphis, by the way. Got to go see uh, my guy, Siwoo Kim. Where is Siwoo at, who is having a disastrous week in Memphis? He's 54th in this. I'll probably still use him anyway, mainly because, uh, if people didn't know, I got sent a cameo from Siwoo Kim, and this is what he had to say about his, the state of his game and where we should be looking for old C. Woo! at the moment. Hello, oh, this is Siwoo, Pat. So thanks for following me, and uh, I know you're like, but... Draft King, so uh, if you pick me some tournament, I would say bad at Wyndham. So I play always good at Wyndham and uh, see you later. See you end of the year and thank you. He's an auto bet for me every single week, but he's telling me, Woo! I love Memphis. Woo! Not Memphis. The Wyndham. Woo! You need to take me. Woo! This week. Hopefully he played badly enough at the WGC that we actually get a good number on him this time around. Not that he's going to win, but it'll just be fun to bet him at 80 to 1 in this field. Although, when the odds come out, you know he's going to be like 35 to 1 because this field isn't strong and they'll factor in course history. Anyway, back to the modeling. Who really pops out here? So, Power, Kokrak, Louis, Hank, Hammer and Hank. Shez, Streelman, Reed, Armour, Burns, Vegas, Norlander, Stanley, who just... E Actually, this is funny. Stanley has not been eating up the 450, 400 to 450, probably because he's just so terrible on the greens. 145th of 156 players in putting. That's not great. Same as Hideki. Hideki bots down there, too. And he's not playing those shorter par fours very well at all, but the approach has been firing. Tita Green has been awesome. 150 to 175. Who has been the best in that range? Reevee Henley. Maybe it's time for a Russell Henley resurgence. I don't know. How has he been playing, anyway? 
Yeah, I mean, he missed the cut at the Open, but had three really nice results before that. He's been kind of out of sight, out of mind. This does strike me as a Russell Henley course, so I can see it. Maybe we'll get some decent odds on him. Molinari's still up there in that range. Kuchar's still up there. I mean, this is a spot where, on paper, in my mind, Molinari could make a pretty good run, but you know, we'll see about that. And this is a Luke Donald made cut week. Perfect for him. Ryan Moore's still up there. Oh, God, man. this this I, I'm kind of excited for this tournament because I've just been kind of, like, spaced out on everything lately. Let's see. Todd Father in terms of four, 400 to 450. Kadira still up there. So we'll await the results of that. There, there wasn't much to do. And if I shrink it down to top or past 12 rounds overall, maybe we'll generate a bit of a different result. And obviously, this is without the strokes gain data from Memphis. And there is no strokes gain data outside of strokes gain total from the Barracuda. So... We probably don't want to be looking too much at that. If we do shrink down the sample size to past 12 rounds, the overall ranking from the key stats gives us Louis Henley Stumanji, Brian Stewart, Shez Revy, Seamus Power, Ryan Armour still sticks. Oh, Hubba Hubbard. He had a nice run here a year ago, as I recall, before the last few holes got to him. Libiota, Norlander, and the Herminator are the top 10. Vegas, List, Munoz. Duffner, I mean, it's always Duffner going to be up there. Brennan Grace, our guy Gellerman, who missed the cut finally at the alternate event. Uh, Scott Stallings is 31st. Okay, it's about all the same names that we're used to dealing with. What I want to do now is switch back over to the St. Jude and see what is happening over there. Let's, uh, let's go with the weekend stats. Jump over to the in-tournament and see if there is any outliers. I haven't really dug much into the in-tournament stats from this event. I just know that Siwoo and Sergio were putting like absolute dog shit, so that shouldn't surprise me, but that's what the case was. Strokes gained approach leaders for the weekend. Burger can't putt. That's been a problem with him, as a guy who has money on Burger right now. Uh, English is second in strokes gained approach, tied with Bryson going into the final round. Thomas is pulling a classic Justin Thomas. All the approach can't putt. He's going to win one of these fucking playoff events you just know he is he's gonna have a hot putting week and that's gonna be the end of it matsuyama has bled almost four strokes on the green maybe he is the lean right now for Wyndham. thinking about it it should be a really good course for him i feel like he plays this tournament a lot and has not had a lot of great results there i mean the approach has been fire all the way through wind him Wyndham miscut 11th third miscut miscut 15th it's never really putted or chipped well there but if the approach continues to go on the same way you got to watch out for, for Hideki here you do worry that the putter does hold him back in an event like the Wyndham because it's one of those ones where you probably need to gain five or six strokes on the green in order to do anything hopefully Harris English can keep up this hot putting where's Billy Ho Billy Ho just having a pretty like overall decent week uh, nothing great but the chipping hasn't really cost him. You know, he's driving it well. The approaches are pretty good. Putting it well. Will Zalatoris is in the field. He's starting to do everything well again. He's minus 11 going into the final day. Who are the bad putters this way? Oh, my God, Siwoo. Minus 7.6 strokes putting. He's through five. He's through nine holes in his final round as I'm recording this. Obviously, the approach, minus 7.5. But I, I feel like I can't let this worry me about Siwoo. I mean, he could definitely most have a bad week, but... A withdraw, a terrible performance is just not something I'm too concerned about with him because he just flips it so often. Oh, good. Good for you, Sergio. Just having another immaculate ball striking week and can't putt or even chip to save your life. Who is in the field next week, though? I can't remember if Ortiz is playing for, or not, but the ball striking has been excellent for him. Uh, can't chip or putt this week. Herman not putting at all, just not playing well, but he'll be one of the favorites going into next week. It's been all chipping for Kevin Nah as we take a look at it. Although Kevin Na and the Wyndham should be a decent fit based on his profile. Sungjae, okay, here we go. This is actually encouraging for me to see to keep a decent number off of him. Gaining off the tee, gaining on approach, losing chipping and losing putting. Uh, that should flip, you would think. He's not going to... You can't keep a good man down for long on Bermuda grass greens, losing 2.4 strokes putting. If he can get himself into the weekend, we might actually catch a pretty decent number on Sung Jae at the Wyndham because he's sort of out of sight, out of mind at the moment. Uh, Herman, after a nice 27-hole uh, run at this event, has kind of turned back into Jim Herman. It's all just chipping for him at the moment. That's not great. Uh, bad driving from Kokrak, but everything else story checks out for him, so... Now, I wouldn't hate him for a three-time winner. Could he be? Could he and Harris English become third-time winners on the PGA Tour this year? That would be pretty striking. Bad driving for Sam Burns this week. Wolfie, 
Oh, poor Wolfie. Minus four on approach. His approach has actually been pretty good. I don't know if I'll get on him at the Wyndham, but Webb, minus 4.7 strokes gained approach. That's got to be his lowest in a really long time. Now I, now I need to go look at this for Webley. Minus 4.7. Memorial in 2020, minus 5.3. Then he rebounded the next week actually at this event, or his next time out at this event, and gained 4.2. So the last time he lost so many. When was the last time he lost? I guess he, he's come in losing strokes on approach in consecutive events, but it wasn't all that much. He lost at WGC Mexico before the pandemic and then coming out of the pandemic. So it's been a really long time for him. Northern Trust and Dell in the 2018 playoffs would be another time that's happened for him. So we might get a nice, decent buy low spot on Webb Simpson if he can figure out these irons. But it does seem like there's something legit wrong with him. Harris English has officially entered he has taken the Webb Simpson void, like the resurgence of Webb Simpson becoming a top 10 player in the world. That happened, and now Harris English has essentially grabbed that role from him with his play over the past 18 months. Essentially, just before the pandemic and through the pandemic has been Harris English time, so he has gained that role of resurgent, old, like not older, but like a guy who was good a few years ago, lost it, came back. Uh, that is Harris English occupying that role um, from the very elite of the American side. So that's interesting to see. Anyone else playing Reed? Ah, Reed can't drive the ball for shit, but he's putting well, and the approaches aren't a you know, disaster. So not too concerned about that. Maybe Reed is worth a look, too. I guess we can kind of guess the odds on some of these players. It's going to be a really difficult field because I think there's going to be players that get added in, but I'm thinking that Louie, Webb, and Reed, there's got to and Hideki, obviously, are probably going to be your favorites. Kokrak, yeah, Kokrak's got to be a part of this as well. Kok, he's probably on a mini tier with like Will Z, Bubba, Reed, Zelatoris. I wonder if they'll overprice Ricky because he needs a good week and people will want him to have a good week. He's going to generate a lot of betting interest either way. And this is a good course for Ricky, obviously. He's just not playing the greatest right now, as evidenced by his ranking in the FedEx Cup standings. He entered this week 125th, and he's not playing. He really should have played the Barracuda. Not that he's not going to get into all these fields next year because he's Ricky Fowler. He'll get every sponsor's invite, and he'll still qualify for a bunch of these tournaments based on past history and success on the PGA Tour. But... You think he'd probably want to make the playoffs. Not that it's going to make him any better or worse because of that. Uh, Henley will be on the next tier down. See, woo, will be on that next tier down. So, I wonder if Sungjae will be a part of this third tier of the betting odds or the Kokrak, Will Zalatoris, Harmon tier. I'm going to throw Harmon into that mix too. So then we have, who else? Kirk, Wolf, Bubba, Reed. Yeah, it's not the greatest field. Ryan Moore, Michael Thompson. Yeah. Adam Scott is playing. He'll just get name recognition odds along with Ricky. So he'll probably be up there. So the official guess is for the Wyndham Championship. I'm going to go with Louie at 12 to 1, Webb at 14 to 1, Reed at 14 to 1, Hideki at 14 to 1. Some might be lower, some might be higher. It might be Louie and Webb at 12, Hideki and Webb at 12, Louie at 14. But I think that's the range that they're going to be in. If you can catch a Webb, Reed, or Hideki at like 18 or lower, that might be the play. I'm going to say that Kokrak and Zalatoris are going to be 22 with Brian Harmon at 25. Yes, this is the sort of field that we're dealing with this week. And then we'll have Siwoo, Sungjae, Scott, and Fowler, 35, 35, 35, and 40. You'll probably get Henley at 35 or 40. Who else are we looking at? Is there a name that I'm not remembering that I have probably brought up? Let's just give it one more dig in. Brennan Grace is playing in this field too, I think. He could be a decent look as a former winner of the Heritage with the way that he's playing so far this season. I, I'll bet he comes in around like 40, 45 to 1, but where he hasn't had you know, the most success recently, like just in the immediate past, no, he's not playing. Uh, Henley, yeah, no, Henley is playing. Grace is playing. So those are two guys that you could potentially go to in this event. I'm just going to go to strokes gain total to make sure that I'm not missing anyone. You're going to get like uh, Seamus Power will probably be like 45 to 1. Libiota 55 to 1. Vegas, you might get it 50 to 1. Herman, 
and Bubba probably in that like 50 to 60 to one type range. Chuck Schwartzel playing pretty well recently as well in terms of strokes gain total could be a decent look at this course. And you'll get like the Reeves, the Kisners, that type of player, Mackenzie Hughes, Zach Johnson, they'll all fall between like your 50 and 75, depending on the book you should use. You should be using DraftKings Sportsbook, but there could be better numbers out there as well. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, 32 minutes with an eight minute rant off the top is not bad. I'm going to try to shrink this down. I'll have the research shows available for everyone throughout the rest of the playoffs. Remember to subscribe to the newsletter. Where we'll have updated information throughout the course of the week as well. Sunday, Monday, Wednesday now for golf with football on Tuesdays. I just don't want to miss out on those, you know, downloads and viewership where people are just waiting for football throughout the course of the week because that is a large subset. And people say, oh, Pat, Pat, golf is so popular for you, which is true. But numbers just like being the way I tried to describe it one time is like being one of the you know top few guys in golf content that people go seek out in the betting space, at least, um, is really, you know, it's a great demographic to have. I appreciate everyone who tunes in, but being, you know, second or third or first in golf is the equivalent of being 35th in football in the same space, just based on the raw numbers that are out there. So I do need to service that audience. I don't want to do a disservice to anyone in my golf audience. So that's why I don't want to try to bang out a betting show and then a drafting show for Tuesday morning, then forget about golf. I think the information and picks will be better if we wait until Wednesday, and then I'll have my finalized betting card out that time as well. So thank you all for tuning in. Smash a like, join the Listener's League, and uh, that will do it for me. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!